Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. We are back. It's Lee Gonlock, Eric, and Mark here with you beauties for a momentous occasion. Yet one of, I'm going to say, at least 347 records that Faker has set, broke, and then reset again. <laughs> Latest one, first guy to reach 600 wins in the LCK, and unfortunately... The victims on the plaque for this one are DRX, always just adding a little bit of revenge again from 2022 Worlds. Oh, you always got to get that one if you're a T1, and especially Faker. Yes, 600 wins for the Unkillable Demon King. And you look at the split of it, doesn't really matter what side he's on. He's getting those wins. Doesn't matter what champion most of the time he's on. He's getting those wins for T1. This series, I think you could say, falls into that category as well. I don't know if it really mattered what T1 was playing, the execution, the power, the form. And even when you look at what execution was on the side of DRX in this series, absolutely a T1 victory. Yeah, I mean, as you would expect in a bottom tier versus top tier matchup, it felt so sad. Even in game one, you see DRX, they get... 2v2 kill bot, they get a gank mid, they get a gank top, every single lane they get a kill, and the gold's even, because T1 is just stomping the laning phase at all three. It's always something you're keeping track of with T1, because, you know, a, a, a team, a, a, a combination of players that have sometimes historically gotten out of slow starts, either at the start of a year or in the start of a series, either one, take your pick, but this one for T1, yes, it was a little bit of a slow start in the early game, and it is DRX getting those advantages, but then your eyes drift towards the scoreboard and you see that oh, it's it's 100 gold. Oh, no, wait, T1 is ahead in gold at this point. You were not feared uh, whatsoever what was going on. I think later on, even in this first game, which was a heck of a lot closer than the game two ended up being really a, a defeated performance from DRX in that second game. In the game one, I'm looking at that fight around, in the dragon pit towards dragon teddy he must have been predicting a flash because he's alt in one way goomas keep going the other way and he doesn't make any hit he's just still living rent free ever since they were the duo 80 carries of t1 teddy's still gotta look at guma and be like man look at me i'm on drx now you did this to me that's how fast it can happen man one day you're playing alongside baker the next day some hot shot kid comes through and you're the one playing on drx just the way it goes for my man Teddy. But uh, that second game, how, rarely will you see a team be up three kills to zero and have a 10K gold lead. Yeah, the advantages built up in this one were insane. You had the Senna uh, and Orn down in the bottom lane, keeping track of things for Mr. Kyria, what he's gonna be playing. And even at one point, they're putting everything into that Orn. And this has to be what the idea with this Orn pick scaling up. Different than where Tom, you know, kind of like what Tom Kench used to do with his gray, gray health and everything else. Orn just has health. He doesn't care. He's just big and tanky. He just absorbs it all. Anyways, didn't matter. This series was fully the T1 control. Yeah, and, you know, back to the 600 wins, because the graphic that they had for Faker, obviously, is absolutely insane. He's got over 150 more wins than the guy who's in second, which is Deft, who I know a couple of years away in the LPL, you know he would have a lot more wins, but still, absolutely untouchable. His top 10 champions played, all of them are at least a 50% win rate, and the most played ones, I mean, LeBlanc is approaching 90% win rate, even a zero. It's like the win rates are absolutely astronomical. 67% overall for a guy who's got 600 wins is just nutty. But I think even if Def stays in the LCK, there's, there's an avenue to look at in those years and maybe you go, okay, if you're having the best possible your peak years, which these were very good years for Deft and his performance, you could say, okay, you know, another 90-ish or so wins total throughout the year you could add up type of thing. You're still in a tough situation to get by the GOAT in Faker and what he's been doing, and especially with the lineup that he's had this past couple of years and rolling through as defending world champions. That number is going to go up a little higher than just 600. They definitely gave him player of the game in game two just so they could get an interview <laughs> and talk about 600 games. It had to be, right? 
And uh, I think so, because uh, let's just say a couple of those Nico ultimates were certainly not those <laughs> five-man player of the game Nico ults from Mr. Faker. Yeah, they just wanted to get him on stage so they could talk to him, and that's fine. You know, we love to see uh, Mr. Faker talking on that microphone. We go to the Spring Goat in the LPL, Weibo versus LNG. Jahu and the boys looking to stay undefeated. LNG, they dropped a game to Thunder Talk, so they're frauds. They're not even a good team. They're not even a playoff team in the LPL. Well, it turns out Gala, Mark, Scout, way, way coming over. The team is still pretty damn good, but this was a bit of a banger series. We got a couple of 40-minute games, very back and forth, a lot of spicy Baron fights, but it is LNG coming up clutch in that third game to hand Weibo the first loss. Third game victory for LNG to re-solidify themselves, I'll say, to a lot of people in the community and where they're looking about and uh, re-establish their power in the LPL is a good look at just one game, one series type of thing here for them. Uh, continued that struggle in game one because you had the Draven from Light just popping off for Weibo Gaming and, of course, Chris setting it up with the Blitzcrank. Game two rolls around. Gala takes over. He says, I'm here. I'm still one of the very best top-notch options for the ADC role in the LPL, delivering that firepower. And then, as you mentioned, game three comes through, and it is the clutch factor from Scout leading the way for LNG. And there's even a moment where Scout gets caught out, and it's 5v4, and it looks like Weibo's Avenue back into the game. But even a level 14 Senna is so disgusting, they're scared to even get close to Baron because the range is insane. Obviously, Gala has the Tom Kench to back him up, and that just shows you the oppression that can come with this support, not support, this AD carry Senna pick. It's been an interesting pick that we've seen in this early meta and kind of tracking where the power is in the bottom lane. You know, we've seen sprinklings of Caitlyn's appearing. We've seen a ton of the lethality Varus. We've seen a heck of a lot of ineffective Lucians coming through. But this is the one that I think is that secret pick, that secret sauce of the meta is this Senna that scales up so well, can roll with so many different pairings. And then again, as you mentioned, only level 14. She's still hitting you from miles away for way too much damage. And then you add in the utility that she's bringing in, a top notch option right now at that ADC role. If again, and I know not all the ADCs have the flavor to want to play something like Seth. Yeah, Scout ended up picking up MVP in that third game, but Gala, 16 out of 17 kill participation on that Senna pick. I know you just spam a shield and it's easier to get assists, <laughs> but very solid performance out of him for LNG to move to two and one. LEC playoffs, best of three, loser bracket, everything gets going this weekend and we got some pretty good matchups the craziest thing almost seems rigged every single one of these matchups is a repeat of week three day one matchups i don't know how that possibly happened but that's that's the timeline we're in we're talking about it and i almost didn't believe you there's no way that it would line up so perfectly they would be so lazy in the script writing <laughs> schedule it out but here we are just like this for the lec and you know what? I'll take it because a couple of these matchups are really intriguing the way that you can slice it up, whether you're talking about, you know, little experience gains or, you know, all these other type of things, or you're talking about really that tight contested matchup that is going to be a fight that you're going to look towards the next champion of the LEC. Yeah, and the most contested for me initial matchup has got to be Mad Lions versus Fnatic. Number one, they played an insane 40-minute back-and-forth game in that previous matchup only a week ago. This is the one where the Mad bot lane was kind of smashing Noah and Jun throughout the entire game, and this was the Varus top for Mirwin. Mirwin versus Oscar Rin, and you know there's going to be some crazy stuff going in the top lane. That, that's the crazy thing. I think you can look at this matchup and, of course, you know, anything in the jungle, El Yoya, that is, of course, going to be a major matchup for Mad Loins Koi. But, yes, that top lane is one of those ones that creeps up and does scream out to me that we're going to have something interesting going on. Of course, Mirwin's champion pool, you mentioned the top lane, Varus, is going to be where I'm expecting that we get something special, something different as we move into these best of series. And I want to see that come through 
in, in that gameplay. And then Oskirin in the top side has certainly been someone that has not been shy to as well expand that champion pool a little bit well, but also have that counter to someone else trying something fresh, something spicy. Oskirin is always there to provide something that says, ah, you ain't, you're not styling on me with that new pick. You've got the Spanish top duo of Oscarin and Razart going against the Spanish org. Humanoids going against his former squad. The Fnatic bot lane maybe looking for some redemption after getting slapped around in this last matchup. So plenty to prove for Fnatic. But this feels like the closest one. Fnatic should have an edge. But Mad Lions, they might be able to bring some spice, as we mentioned, in the best ofs now. Yeah, I think uh, obviously you're giving that edge towards Fnatic. But how much of that edge? That really is going to be a close call to decide on what you're going with. I think it is going to be that Fnatic favorite. I can see that world where you get that early win as a squad like Mad Lions and you just don't let off the gas. You keep it going. You find that pressure and keep it on. That's how I think you push it through. Young guns in this playoff scenario. Let's see it. Lots to learn for all these rookies as well. And they will have, again, that loser's bracket uh, for this first round of playoff. Next closest matchup is probably SK versus Vitality. Problem is, I mean, really both of these squads have looked completely different week to week, especially Vitality. You know, they've had an 0-3 and a 3-0 week. What version of Professor Hilly are we getting to show up on the stage? And how good can Viteo be? What picks can he have? to kind of take over in that matchup against Niski. Yeah, that's one of those ones that you're looking at. And really, it's going to be about as well what Niski we are getting for this SK team because we have seen at times Niski is able to step up to that top level. And I say to step up to that top level because I think it is pretty safe to say he's one of these guys that kind of finds himself on his average game a little bit lower than our top level performers. He's contributing other ways to the team, finding other avenues. Someone in these matchups where you do get a top tier guy like Mateo that can pressure you, can set you behind enough where you're not able to be a facilitator for that team. That's where I key in on that individual matchup for Niski. And at the last time they matched up, it was Exekick and Doss. I think they got the first Western win on Lucian and they actually looked good in the bot lane with that Lucian pick so we'll see if that's something that comes through against Karzi and Hill is saying biggest level up that needs to happen is Team Heretics because they're going up against BDS who were looking like one of the two strongest teams uh, throughout the entire round robin stage and of course Perks is the easiest one to highlight because if he's playing at the level that he did in week three, Heretics ain't winning a game in this series. This series will be over lickety split is the way it'll go if that's the type of effort that you're getting from Perks in the mid lane. It's one of these ones where you look at this Heretics roster, this change over right to G2, 1.5, you know, 3.0. I don't know, I'm not gonna go high, can't go the higher <laughs> numbers with this type of performance. No way. But Perks individually has got to step it up. And, and this is a very good situation for him to step up to that level and deliver it for this team. I think you look at what is going on for BDS. Of course, we talked so much about Adam in that top side, but it really has been the other four members shining so far this split and rising their game up, showing the improvements, the lessons learned from last year, from that international experience. Bring it into this series. And let's see it all right here. Either Perks steps up and is able to challenge a player like Nuke who has been developing and showing that he is gonna be one of these rising players in the LEC, or you prove that you are kind of behind the wheel, behind the times as it goes in the LEC. And let's see, you know, two of the most uh, talkative top laners in terms of Adam <laughs> versus Wonder. And I'm sure Wonder's been, you know, on the sidelines last year, seeing all the God stuff with Adam, how featured he is, how everyone's talking about him. It's got to be in the back of his mind, the opportunity that he has to make an individual statement game, a series against that. I, I don't know. Uh, Primate or something else has got to be the Pokemon I'm picking for Adam, given the champions that he likes to play, <laughs> those type of things. I don't know exactly what it would be, but it's got to be Wobbuffet for wonder because he's just deflecting. He doesn't care. Yeah. You can be three angry. man dives. No problem whatever he's just deflecting it off of him man it's that counter attack is the way it goes for wonder yes that will be an interesting option to see how things play out in that top side i think obviously of course for heretics wonder has been a major step up over what you were getting from avi last year but that's gonna be really put to the test again against adam who has been 
one of the more dominant options on the top side this past year or so for the LEC. Last matchup is, again, equally, probably even more one-sided than uh, that Team Heretics BDS matchup. G2 versus Giant X. It was a slaughter when they met in uh, week three. They won. Not a single turret for GX. G2 are going to be the huge favorites with a three-game win streak coming into this. And you got rookie Jackies matching up against Caps in his best, in his first ever best of three. And uh, talk about stage experience for that. That's exactly what I'm going for in this series. If, if, if you're looking at it for Giant X, I think you got to realize this year it's three splits, right? That doesn't mean that you throw away one of these splits in this opportunity that you have, but you keep that perspective of the big picture, and especially with a rookie like Jackie, who has shown us this potential early. That's where you look into the situation and say, okay, we're getting a best of scenario, a little bit different. You're getting a top tier test in G2 and in the individual matchup of caps in that mid lane excellent time to show what you've got show and get that gauge get comfortable all these type of things are the ways that i would be approaching this if i'm talking to the giant x roster and listen it's it's not so bad drawing g2 or getting picked by g2 in that first matchup because even if you lose you're going to losers and pretty much guaranteed to have an easier matchup then and it's not out of the question. G2 has had bad days. They've had whoopsies here or there. That's always- Especially when they have that bonus life of losers bracket sitting there. Yes, so if you're able to come through with something creative, get out of the gates and grab that advantage, I think that it's absolutely possible that we see this upset. Now, that being said, you gotta understand what you're stacked up against in the performance of G2. This split has been very good. Caps is in a near peak type of level of form. He has been very good for this G2 lineup. And then you step it up into these playoffs. You look at all the matchups and where you're going to see kind of some bleeding on the side of Giant X. I'm seeing a lot of it. I'm not seeing a lot of avenues where you're going to get that strike back against G2. Yeah, now now we've been seeing Mickey, much like, I'm not going to compare him to Kyria, but maybe <laughs> EU Kyria, where he likes to have some fun with some of these picks. We've seen him get the Nico uh, and have a solid performance on it. So he's cooking in that bot lane and caps. As you said, he had the most player games uh, out of anyone in this split. So he is in peak form. G2 going to be huge favorites there, but you never know in these opening rounds. Pretty good matchups across the board to kick things off in the LEC, but that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, beautiful people. As always, thanks for hanging out, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.